Hi everyone, and welcome back to a new episode on how to make an action RPG in Godot 4. In this episode, we will continue to work on our inventory. I've gotten so incredibly many questions on how to click and move items around. So this is what we will start working on now. It is a bit complicated, so I will divide the topic into a few episodes. In this first episode, we will mainly focus on refactoring parts of the system we've made so far, so it's easier to move items around later on. And now let's get started. Okay, so we need to figure out when the mouse is clicking on one of our inventory slots here. And there is a few ways we can do this. Right now, our slots are panel nodes, and we could of course keep them like that. It's definitely possible to register mouse clicks with these. But it's even easier if we use buttons instead. And luckily, it's super easy to change the type of the root node in this case. All we need to do is right click on the root node, select change type, and then choose the button node. And then in our slot GUI script, we of course have to change it at the top here, so it extends from button instead of panel. Now let's test to see that everything is working as before. Ok, next we need to figure out when a slot is being clicked. Luckily, our new button nodes has a pressed signal that's emitted every time you click on it. In the script for the inventory GUI, we create a new function to receive these signals from our button slots. I'm calling my function on slot clicked. And just under the ready function, I create a new function called connect slots, where I go through all the slots and connect their pressed signal to our new on slot clicked function. Finally, remember to call this connect slots function in the ready function, so the slots are connected correctly right from the start. Ok, now let's insert a pass in the unslot clicked function and add a breakpoint to this line. And then let's test again. Now we can try to click on one of the slots. The program should stop in the unslot clicked function. So now we know when one of the slots is being clicked on. But we don't know which one it is. So let's change the input to the onSlot clicked function, so it takes a variable called slot as input. And up in our connect slots function, we then need to tell our slot buttons that they should include themselves with the pressed signal. For this, we will be creating a callable. First, we create our callable from the onSlot clicked function. To add input to the call, we then need to bind it to the callable. And finally we connect the slot pressed signal to our new callable. You can read more about callables in the documentation. I've left a link in the description to this video to where you can read more about this. Ok, now let's test again. Still with the breakpoint in the onSlot clicked function. Try to collect an item and then click on the slot it's in. In the debugger window, we can then inspect the slot we received as input and see if it holds the item we expected. Now we know which slot we are clicking on. The next thing is to pick up this item. If we look at our slot GUI scene, we can see that it includes a sprite for both the actual container and for the item in the container. This was fine before, but now we need to divide it into two separate scenes, so we can grab the item later on. We want the panel in the center container to be the root node of its own scene. 
To do this, we can right-click on the panel node and select Save Branch as Scene. We then select where we want to store the new scene. I'm calling this new scene Item Stack GUI. And this then automatically creates a new scene with the panel at the root node. Now add a script to this new scene. Give the script a class name. And add a reference to an inventory slot to it. Okay, now we need to move some code around to get everything working properly again. First, we delete the instance of an item stack GUI from the center container of the slot GUI scene. Not all slots will have an item in them, so this scene shouldn't have one added to it by default. Next, we need to move and adjust some code from the slot GUI script to the new item stack GUI script. In the item stack GUI script, we add references to both the item sprite and amount label. And we remove the same from the slot GUI script. In the item stack GUI script, we also create an update function. This function will be very similar to parts of what we have in the slot GUI script. First, we check if either the slot or the slot item is null and return if this is the case. If we have an inventory slot with an item, we then update both the sprite and the amount label, like we did in the slot GUI script before. Back in our slot GUI script, we also need to make some changes. First, we create a reference to the center container. And add a variable to store a reference to an item stack GUI. Next, we look at the functions. Since the item GUI is no longer a part of this scene, we now need an insert function instead of the update function. The insert function takes an item stack GUI as input. We store this input in our new item stack GUI variable. And because we insert an item, we also set the frame of the background sprite to 1. And finally, we add the inserted item stack GUI as a child of our center container. Now let's go to our inventory GUI script. Here we now need to change the update function so it adds item stack GUIs to the slots when needed. First, let's delete the call to the update function that no longer exists. Instead, we create a reference to the inventory slot we're working with. If the slot doesn't have an item, it means it's empty. We then don't need to add an item stack GUI, so we just continue. Next, we get a reference to the item stack GUI of the corresponding slot GUI. If the slot GUI doesn't have an item stack GUI yet, we then need to create one for it. To instantiate a new item stack GUI from the script, we first need to preload the scene. So in the top of our script, we do this and store a reference to it in a new variable called item stack GUI class. Back in our update function, we can then instantiate a new item stack GUI and insert it to the slot GUI.
Finally, we need to set the inventory slot of the item stack GUI. And update it so the correct sprite and amount will be shown. And now let's test again to make sure that everything is still working as expected after all our refactoring. If you like this video and want to see more like this in the future, then remember to like and subscribe to my channel. And if you want to support my work on the channel further, then I have a Patreon page set up for this. Or you can choose to become a channel member here on YouTube. And that was all for this video. Our game might look exactly the same as before this episode, but a lot has changed. And now we're ready to start clicking and picking up items from the inventory in the next episode. Bye!